How's it going everyone? Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday to you and yours. This is going to be another short video in the context of cassettes, cassette tapes, cassette decks. I'm going to show you some uh, blank tapes that I've recently acquired off of eBay and one item in particular from a local seller on which I might have splurged just a little bit but just so I could satisfy my thirst and passion for cassettes and analog music playback. I'm also going to show you some pre-recorded material that I've got my hands on, uh, on cassettes as well, in the form of some audiobooks that I've recently bought. And uh, I'm also going to show you uh, a vinyl record that I've recently bought, but I haven't played that yet, because uh, audiophiles are generally of the opinion that the first time you play vinyl, that's when you get the best sound quality. And it's important to preserve that sound quality upon first listening attempt and record that onto a cassette. So you can always have access to that superior sound quality of uh, really analog recording. I'm going to show you all of these, but first uh, let's have a look at uh, this cassette so we can revisit some of the concepts that we addressed uh, in the last video. So we talked about the different types of uh, cassettes. There are four different types, uh, three of which are more prominent compared to an outlier, which is really the uh, ferrochrome tape. A lot of decks that you can uh, get your hands on these days, they don't have the setting for the ferrochrome. And uh, it's more like a rarity really on eBay too. So I'm gonna set that aside and not really concentrate on that. We're gonna focus on really the three uh, types that you can purchase off of eBay and you know, find them maybe from a local seller. There are four, three different types. Uh, the first one is the ferro, which is the ferric oxide Fe203, iron three oxide. That's the type one. We have the type two the chromium dioxide, which is the CRO2, or they just call it the chrome tape, and also the metal tape. Now the metal tape is supposed to give you the best sound quality in terms of uh, treble response, the bass response, and also really uh, to give you a hi-fi experience of the music. So I've actually purchased a metal tape this time, and uh, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna record onto that and what I plan to do with it. And that's the item that I said I kind of uh, maybe uh, overpaid for it just a little bit. But uh, I was a bit curious about metal tapes and I really wanted to uh, see if it sounds really different from those other types, uh, the chrome and the ferro tape. So the, uh, the chrome tape actually is something uh, I'd never recorded music onto that either, but I did own a pre-recorded cassette on chrome tape and uh, last time I told you about this uh, cassette, The Crest of a Knave by Jethro Tull, that is recorded onto a chrome tape. Now this to me sounded better than uh, another tape I'm, I'm gonna show you in just a minute. But one of the ways to tell if this is a chrome tape is just to look at it. This, uh, the tape has this kind of charcoal chrome color to it. And also it says on the tape as well, this is a chrome tape. And uh, this sounds better, I mean, it could, have to do with maybe, maybe the mastering of the tape, but this is again Thick as a Brick by Jethro Tull. This is recorded onto a ferro tape or a ferric tape, and you can tell the difference between the two. Now, the brownish color is the, uh, the ferro tape, and the, the chrome color is the chrome tape. So, this to me sounded a little bit better, had better maybe uh, bass response. The treble response, I think, was pretty much equal between the two, but this had better bass response and uh, to me it might be a bit superior to the ferro tape but uh, really I can't really say that objectively I don't have any really tangible evidence to prove that even to myself so but what I'm going to show you is uh, some of these materials that I've purchased uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is this metal tape that I just that I bought um, as I said I might have overspent on this just a little bit but uh, not too bad now this is a Denon Sport metal tape. It's, uh, it's 100 minutes tape, which is pretty good. And at the bottom is written uh, slim, smooth, portable case. We'll see if uh, that is the case. And I've never actually unwrapped this. I wanted to unwrap it with you guys. And on the back, it says uh, the position bias, the metal type four tape. And, uh, and then uh, Sport Metal is great for CD recording and ideal for high quality card decks 
and portables. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to try to uh, record a vinyl that I recently bought. Uh, I'm going to listen to this album for the first time on vinyl. Uh, of course, I own this on CD. I have access to this on the streaming service as well. Actually, I put it over here. So this is uh, Porcupine Trees Signify. And the album cover actually is really a concept piece. One of my most favorite uh, prog rock records of all time. Uh, it's a beautiful presentation, great album cover by Porcupine Tree. Uh, it's got the lyrics. And Porcupine Tree is really one of the bands for whom I have uh, the greatest respect because they emerged as a prog rock band when progressive rock music back in the 90s was the most unfashionable form of music to uh, really operate within that context. I mean, there were some new progressive rock bands still that were making music. Some prog rock bands like Jethro Tull and Emerson Lake and Palmer that were still making music, but they rose to prominence back in the 70s when prog rock was pretty fashionable. Whereas Porcupine Tree emerged out of the darkness of uh, popular music and you know boy bands and you know girl bands and uh, atrocious stuff that you know I'm just not interested in. One documentary I recommend that you guys should watch is the Stockholm effect, that a lot of these bands that were being portrayed in the mainstream media back in the 90s and 2000s, that these bands had been formed of the volition of their members and they were writing their own music and they were composing their own songs. You should watch that uh, program, really. I think it's on Netflix. And it tells you that there was uh, a record producer in Sweden who was writing all the music for these bands and uh, in order for them to achieve fame, and attain the status of a celebrity. They have to fly all the way to Sweden and have this guy to write the music for them. So don't expect any authenticity from a lot of these uh, popular bands that you see these days because uh, number one, they're not musicians, they're not artists, they don't write their own music. Somebody else writes the music and dictates to them what they need to do in order to attain the, uh, as I said, the celebrity status, which is very depressing. So. Let's get on with it and let's go ahead and unwrap this metal tape and see what it's all about. I've got my knife over here. Let's go ahead. That sound is uh, it's pretty satisfying when you unwrap a cassette tape. So let's go ahead and uh, unwrap this guy. Let's see if uh, the case is slim and smooth as they said on the... Uh, the cover. Oh wow, this looks very, very different from any cassette that I've seen before. Looks beautiful. Look at that. It's metal position type 400 minutes, made by Denon. And I think Denon was one of the very few companies back in the uh, 80s and 90s that they actually produced their own tapes. I don't think it was another tape producing company that manufactured tapes for Denon. I think they, they made their own tapes. Uh, I'll probably have to do some research on that, but I'm pretty sure that it was the case. Just a beautiful, beautiful tape. So this vinyl record, I think I put it over here, is going to be recorded onto this metal tape. And uh, in my next video, I'm going to tell you uh, what I think about it and uh, what the sound quality is and uh, is like. And I, as I said, I try to preserve the, uh, the experience of the first listening attempt onto your cassette so I can always have access to that superior sound quality of the first vinyl playback. Now the other thing I've bought is really a piece of history. I'm going to show you that in a second. It's uh, the TDK, the reference standard cassettes. And these are chrome tapes. What's interesting is that this is, uh, says TDK official audio and video tape supplier to the world championships in athletics in Rome Italy. So it's a piece of history, really. And uh, this was made back in 1987. It hasn't been unwrapped since. So what we're going to be unwrapping is really a piece of history. And uh, that's what I find lovely about cassettes. Some of the materials that you buy, they date back to many years ago. And uh, people didn't unwrap them. People maybe just bought them and uh, just uh, didn't unwrap them. They just uh, collected them. So these can turn into collectible materials. But I didn't purchase this for the purpose of collecting it. I'd like to put it to some good use. Now, what I'm going to do with these 
So first, we're going to go ahead and unwrap it. Let's get our knife. Unwrap the box. Oh, I was, there was something I was into. I was going to show you too. It says uh, two fifty thousand dollar grand prize, forty thousand dollar cash, and a luxurious eight day night trip to Rome for two plus VIP passes to the nineteen eighty seven World Championships and Athletics Games as guests of TDK. And it's got the address where you need to send it. TDK Electronics Corporation, 2 Harbor Park Drive, Port Washington, New York, 11050 zip code. And it says the audio tape made in Japan, the cassette assembled in USA. Just beautiful, actually. Uh, the presentation is excellent. And back in the days, they put a lot of uh, effort, actually, in uh, packaging these. And I'm very pleased with this. So let's go ahead and unwrap this guy too. Again, it gives me that sense of satisfaction when I unwrap this. Oh wow, look at these. These are just beautiful. I don't know if you guys get excited, as excited as I get when you unwrap a cassette, but there's something really uh, interesting and intriguing and really fascinating about cassettes. And they can be really works of art. Just looking at them uh, really gives me a lot of satisfaction. So let's go ahead and unwrap the first one. Wow, another, another beautiful tape. So the high bias 70 micro S EQ SA90. So it's a 90 minute tape, which is lovely. Again, beautiful presentation. And this happens to be a chrome tape. Now you get to see that, you know, the white color because you have to fast forward it to get to the actual uh, recording, uh, actual recordable uh, part of the cassette. So again, beautiful presentation. I prefer the I don't know, the, the look of a denim is also beautiful. Also that the ferro tape I showed you last time by TDK, that one also looked uh, quite excellent. Uh, well, let's see, find one that has been unwrapped. I don't know where I put it. Uh, maybe I put it. Okay, yeah, so here. So, so we have the ferro, the ferric oxide tape FE203. We have the metal tape, which is the type four. And we have the Type 2, which is the chrome tape, the uh, CRO2 chromium dioxide. So we can take a look at the... Uh, I'll have to fast forward these for you guys to see. Uh, the, really the uh, how really the colors differ from one another. So with the chrome tape, what I'm going to try to do is to record one of my really uh, most favorite uh, prog rock albums of all time. Really in the category of uh, kind of prog rock, kind of folk rock. To me, progressive rock is really amalgamation of different styles of uh, music. So this particular album, Songs from the Wood by Jethro Tull, this is really an amalgamation of classical music, uh, prog some uh, progressive rock music, as I said. Well, not progressive rock music. Progressive is the so prog rock is really the uh, the category, but it's it's a combination of classical music, jazz music, some pop music, and uh, some classical music sensibility as well. So that's why I love progressive rock. It's, prog rock is about making hybrids, and this album is really testament to that. And uh, just a great, great album by Jethro Tull. This was written back in 1976, I think, when Ian Anderson, the front man of Jethro Tull, the main songwriter, had moved to the English countryside, I think in Scotland, and on the salmon farm. So he really moved into the, uh, the woodlands and... Uh, Basically, this, he wrote the album to describe the experiences that he had when he lived in that part of the world back in the days, back in the 70s. Just a beautiful uh, album cover. It's got the lyrics sheet in there. Just everything. Uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Album cover is great. Gives it this kind of, uh, uh, kind of longing for spending time in nature. And uh, every time I kind of feel like that, I put this record on and sit back and uh, have a good time with it. Kind of encourages me to go outside and 
explore nature after I listen to this. Really, really inspiring uh, piece of music. So, let me show you uh, what these tapes look like. I'm going to fast forward these tapes a little bit and show you the colors of the tapes. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you some other materials that I've recently got my hands on. I'm going to show you uh, some audiobooks, a collection of Sherlock Holmes and cassettes. And this one is actually a wonderful, wonderful uh, audiobooks of uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, stories. So this particular one is read by Sir John Gilgut, Rolf Richardson and Orson Welles. And uh, it's a really a theatrical performance on the part of uh, these actors and uh, voice artists. Just a, just a beautiful, beautiful uh, cassette collection. It's got the, uh, the usual suspects of Sherlock Holmes as far as the stories. So the Blue Carbuncle, the Norwood Builder, the Solitary Bicyclist, the Final Problem, Case of Identity, the Six Napoleons, the Mystery of uh, the Second Strain, Speckled Band, the Blackmailer, and Scandal in Bohemia, in which Sherlock Holmes is defeated by a woman. Quite interesting. There's another uh, one that I'm going to show you is these collections again Sherlock Holmes but this one is with uh, Razzle, uh, I'm sorry Basil Rathbone so Basil Rathbone and uh, quite a few stories and these were kind of uh, modernized I think uh, back in the early 90s during the I think some of these were recorded during the Second World War so they have uh, they sort of dramatized Sherlock Holmes stories with a tinge of uh, what was happening at the time with regards to the, uh, the World War situation. There's another tape that I've also bought as well, and that's uh, this one. Again, another uh, audiobook. Sherlock Holmes, Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, The Speckled Band, Adventure of the Copper Beaches. But this one is read by David Timpson. So David Timpson, the voice artist of this particular uh, cassette collection of Sherlock Holmes stories, is from the same town as uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was from who authored Sherlock Holmes' uh, detective novels, detective fiction. And uh, so, yeah, it's really interesting that he's from the same place as he was. Beautiful. They have classical music playing in the background as well. So it uh, gives me a lot of satisfaction when, every time I listen to this. So and the, the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, this one by Shakespeare, The Life of Shakespeare, Hesketh Pearson. I haven't listened to this yet, but I plan to do so. And I'll let you guys know what I think about it. So yeah, so far so good. Great collections of uh, audiobooks and cassettes. And also some vinyl recordings that I'm going to record onto cassettes. And uh, let you guys know what I think of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. I fast forwarded these just a little bit. So we can uh, tell how they differ in terms of color. Now... By visual examination, we can tell that this, this one is definitely a ferro tape. It's got the brownish color. But between the metal tape and the, uh, the chrome tape, the difference isn't as pronounced. Uh, they look pretty similar, actually. So if these didn't have the labels of the metal tape, I don't think I would have been able to tell them apart. And uh, the other thing I'm going to try to see if I can objectively tell if the metal tape sounds superior to his chrome counterpart. That's something uh, I'm kind of curious about. I'm going to try that. I just realized that the only way that I can tell the difference uh, between the sound quality of the metal and the chrome tape is to record the same exact music on both medium. So what I'm going to do is that Signify Vinyl by Porcupine Tree. What I'm going to do is to record that onto metal tape and record the same exact thing on this one. Because I have another one that I'm going to use for that song from the wood by Jethro Tull. So I'm going to record that onto both of these and then try to see if I can objectively tell the difference between the two in terms of sound quality, the bass response, the treble response, and finesse, and uh, those kind of things. So, yeah, stay tuned. Next time I'll tell you about what I discovered out of listening to these two different types of tapes. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel. And uh, stay tuned for more interesting materials to come. And uh, again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.